Hi, everybody. This is Tiffany Fontenot from We Are Here Lit, and I'm here today with a special guest, Channing Chasen from the uh, professional football team, um, the Union Omaha, and he's here today to speak with us about literacy, being an author, and playing professional soccer. Thank you for joining us today, Channing. How are you doing? Thanks, Tiffany. I'm doing well. I'm excited to be featured on We Are Here Lit. Um, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So what I like to do is I always like to take it back to the beginning of where it all starts with reading and things like that. Um, so when you were young, what were your reading experiences like in school? What were some of the highs and lows and good and bad of, of um, what you felt about reading? I feel like growing up when I was younger, reading was always a big part of my life, especially in elementary school and preschool and kindergarten. My mom always made sure that it was a big part of my life because she knew that literally um, being able to read was a big part of life and it coincided with success in life as well. Um, so growing up, I always enjoyed reading. Um, I didn't really like enjoy reading long books because I would always fall asleep, but it was something I really, really enjoyed mm -hmm. um, at such a young age. Um, so um, what were some of your favorite books in school that you remember reading and why were they your favorite? Percy Jackson series was one of my favorite. I really enjoyed Rick Riordan. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Greek mythology. I don't know what it was with Greek mythology, but I just love how um, the different characters had different types of powers. Their, their offspring was able to have different types of powers because of who their parents were. So it was just everything that came along with it, I loved. I was also a pretty big fan of Harry Potter as well. Mm -hmm. So those two, three things were something that I loved about Greek mythology. And you read those books like yourself. You weren't audio booking it and stuff like that. Because that's pretty, those are kind of thick books. You they know? Really, but yeah, I was reading those books all by myself. Nice. Good stuff. Um, what were what were your some of your library experiences like? Were you a library person or no? I was a library person. My mom would take me to the library almost uh probably almost every every week, me and my sister. We have to go pick out a book. We also just hang out in the library. Um, mm -hmm. So we were different books that we saw there that looked cool. Um, we'd also play different games they had there, but we had to be quiet, you know, because it's the library. But <laughs> they also had some different things like stuffed animals that were at like the, I remember when I was younger at the library that I loved to play with. So I really enjoyed going to the library at a young age. Do you remember when you first got your library card? Do you remember how old you were about? Or did you just always remember having it? I would say I was pr probably in the, maybe probably kindergarten. Okay, very good, nice, yeah. So um, with reading, like who would you consider to be like your reading role model? Like what did they do to like encourage you to read and make you enjoy reading? What were some of those characteristics? I would say my reading role model was my mom. She made sure I really was big into reading. Uh, she wrote that into my head and the reason why I would say she it made it a little bit more enjoyable was because she would always give us incentives for a certain amount of pages we read and then she would quit us at the end of the books of like when reading comprehension because mm -hmm. she knew it was a big deal with like standardized tests and state tests so that's what I would say is why she was a big role model for it because she always read a lot for uh, by choice um mm -hmm. even, you know, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> he said by choice <laughs> was it harder for you to get into being like an engaged reader initially or was it just the story outside of those like Harry Potter and Percy Jackson was it hard for you to find stories that you liked I would say it was I also liked Diary of a Wimpy Kid being young uh Captain Underpants I loved those books as well mm -hmm. um but yeah, so I wouldn't say it was too hard, but I definitely had a, diff a, a unique style of book that I enjoyed uh, growing up. Do you feel that you saw yourself in books at all? Not really, because I feel like the books I read, I, they didn't really have a Black young kid as a main character, so I kind of had to spin it a little bit. I feel like a lot of the books I read were uh, white male main characters, mm -hmm. even though sometimes my mom would like try to try to find some books that looks had a main character looking like me, but it was it was pretty difficult to find. So just to go a little deep here, because seeing how your your genre of books here, 
they seem to be like magical characters. Did you ever feel that you were magical seeing how you've read about these other characters that were? Did you feel like you could be? I didn't. I didn't. Mm. I don't know why I did it, but mm -hmm. I thought so it would be pretty cool to be magical and have those type of powers like they did. But I never truly thought that I had those powers. Interesting. Yeah, I find that too. I think um, what's cool is that they do have a lot more books now that do have, are representative of us and that we're magical. But I was just interested in that based on the genre that you like. So you are a soccer, soccer player. When did this start? When did your interest in soccer begin? I started playing soccer ever since I was about three or four years old. Mm -hmm. And it started, my parents took me out one day, got me to the Paris cleats, and we went to go play for this one rec team. And mm -hmm. I just enjoyed it. I saw the picture to this day where I think it was my first time they took me out and I'm sitting on the soccer ball on the field. Um, but yeah, ever since then, it's just been a relationship that I've developed and loved ever since the beginning. Did you play other sports too? I did. I played lacrosse, baseball, uh, football. In high school, I ran track as well for two to three years. So I, I was really well-rounded, but soccer was just the one that stuck with me. What was it about soccer that was so, um, that was your hook? I feel like the biggest thing was being different, being from Ohio. Not many black people played, not many black kids played soccer. So to be one of the only ones and also be good at it, I think that was really appealing to me. I didn't really, I didn't really enjoy doing what everyone else was doing. Okay, that's cool. How did you? So, did your did that kind of independent decision making or perspective? Are you? Is that a part of you? Like, are you still like that to do things that are like outside, you know, the the norm or the what's you know what people expect? I am. Mm -hmm. I like to. I like to do like. If I'm going to do something different, I want to be the best at it. Or if I want to do something, I want to be like standing out for being the best. That's what something that always drove me. I didn't want to stand out for just being the only black kid out there. I wanted to stand out for being the best. So, yeah. How did you find that confidence to just be like, you know, like I might be the only one, but that's okay. You know, like where did that come from that you knew to be like assured in that? I feel like it came over time. Like I for sure didn't have that same level of confidence when I was younger. But as I got older, it, it grew. But I would say at the beginning, was just realizing that I really had a talent for the game. Mm -hmm. That I was actually doing things that other kids couldn't do at my age. So mm -hmm. I, it really gave me confidence. And then as I grew older, it then gave me confidence um, to just be different and uh, embrace my unique self. Okay. Um, who's your favorite soccer player? Or who, who has it been over, if it's changed over time, who's it been? My first favorite soccer player was Pele. And then over time, it started to go to Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. I would say it's probably Messi. And, and oh, cool. What, what, what about them um, were you drawn to? Uh, Pele was one of like the best like black international players that I saw. He was from Brazil. So that kind of resembled me and myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Cristiano Ronaldo. I just truly loved the way he played, how he took people on, was able to score goals, his work ethic. And Messi is just, he does things that aren't human. Like he does things that I've never seen any other player do. So that's pretty appealing. Mm -hmm. um, so when you were playing um, soccer in school, how did you balance school work and and soccer was it hard or did you have difficult times or how did you find your way to balance it I would say doing it in high school wasn't too bad because I had a good I had a good uh, schedule and I'm, I'm not much of a procrastinator so I like to get things done pretty early so I was able to plan out my week but as I got into college it was a little bit more difficult with travel uh, extracurricular activities I was a part of some clubs organizations and then you also have you have to eat you have study hours so it was a lot but I enjoyed it because I feel like at Ohio State we did a really good job of having the necessary the necessary uh, resources to help you uh, navigate ways to set your schedule um, study with different people if needed and then also have time dedicated just to your sports to really hone in on those skills as well. 
did, how did literacy or how does literacy or does it not, how does it play a part of your soccer world and in, in things of that nature? How does it play a part of you being an athlete? I would say it plays a little bit of a part because even in terms of soccer, you have to, sometimes a teacher or I mean, sometimes a coach will have you read something that is about, maybe it may not be about soccer, but maybe it's like a motivational message that he's trying to get across. Um, so at a young age, you need to learn how to comprehend what is being said or told to you, or you have to be, comprehend what is being your reading that the coach gives out. So mm -hmm. I would say that's how literacy kind of plays a part in, in soccer. Um, but in terms of really the game, I wouldn't say it plays a big part, but mm -hmm. yeah. So you played soccer at Ohio State. That's like serious business, you know, like that's for real. Like, what was it like, you know, um, to play at that level, you know, like for soccer, you know, like it's just, that's huge, especially for some, you know, like a black kid is from Arizona you're like, what? And then Ohio at that, like, tell me about what it, what, what, what the process was like and how you felt about um, playing at that level. Yeah, it was amazing. But that was always my dream. Ever mm -hmm. since age, I, I have a kindergarten thing where I wrote on it that my dream was to play college soccer at Ohio State, the Ohio State University. So I just always stri strive for that. No matter what people told me, I always stri strive to reach that goal. And it, it was definitely difficult. Like it definitely came ups and downs throughout that process to reach that goal. But I just always was confident in my abilities and didn't let anyone tell me no. Because the initial coach that recruited me to Ohio State got he was re he retired, so I had to get re-recruited by the new coaching staff, which was a long process. So I had to decommit. So it was a long process, but and yeah. then I was able to make it to, I mean, pretty much one of the best sports academic institutions in the country. So it's pretty amazing. What was it like? Like you you put on the uniform for your first game and you go out. What did you feel like being out there? It, it, I didn't feel real. So actually the first time I ever stepped on the field at Ohio State was my fir first game as a freshman. And my parents, they'll tell you to this day, they might lie. They they didn't expect me to actually play as a freshman because uh -huh. a, lot, a lot of people don't. And I did. So it was amazing. I think my mom was at that game. So mm -hmm. so for me to be there and actually get minutes yeah. uh, in my first game at Ohio State ever was was insane. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So to play at that level, what did your practice look like? What did it look like to practice? I mean, like how much, you know, like you always, people, kids always look at Kobe and he talks about his, you know, like practice ethic. How would you equate what you did to like those ideas? Yeah. Um, at that level, we had practice pretty much every day. We would have to have at least one day off every two weeks. But sometimes we would have optional lifts on that day off. Mm -hmm. So it was mandatory, but you you better go, most of the, you know? <laughs> so, so I would say that was what was a big thing. Um, we would have practice at in the afternoons. So we would have class. I would sometimes have class at 7 or 8 in the morning all the way till sometimes they were separated, but so all up until probably like 12 or 1. Mm -hmm. and, and I would take the bus or pick a get a ride from an order player go to the facility, eat something there, uh, get dressed, get ready. Sometimes we'd have a lift, so we'd work out before practice. And then we'd have practice for about an hour and a half, two hours. Or we'd have practice for an hour, two hours, and then have a lift after. It just all depended. And then we'd come home, get back. I'd have to shower. And then we'd drive back home. Sometimes we'd have to go to the study hall. Because sometimes you have, as a freshman, you have required study study time hours, no matter what. Um, they need to log in. So we go to study hall, go there, eat some dinner, and then go home, get some sleep because you got to do it all over again the next day. So how do you maintain perseverance? You know, like, because that's, a, you know, people see the, the fun part, you know, the uniforms and the gear and you're out there and you're playing. But that's a lot, you know, like that training traveling being you know like all that it's a lot how do you maintain you know like the passion you know with all of that yeah it's definitely a lot I like how you brought the travel because there would be times that we would get back in town and we wouldn't get back in town until like 2 3 a.m 
and it didn't matter on a Sunday. And then the next day on Monday, I had class at 8 a.m. I can't skip. I got to go. <laughs> so, yeah, that was not that was not easy. But I would say it's definitely the perseverance aspect is difficult. But what helps you, I feel like, is having your other teammates and go through the same thing with you. If you were just going through that alone, I feel like it'd be very difficult. But to have your other teammates go with through, through with you and help push you through in some days when you're when you're kind of feeling down or not up for it, that goes a long way. That's a great general lesson. So thank you for sharing that. Um, can you give advice to some young people about um, being a student athlete and and you know like maintaining themselves in that space what would yeah. be the best advice you'd give I would say the biggest advice I would give about being a student athlete is just having a schedule um, but also realizing that you're blessed in to be in that position because there's a lot of people that like to be in your position so you got to cherish it but also not be satisfied um, because it could be gone like this but I would also say another advice is that you have to lean on your teammates a big part of it. And the, te the people that you meet through your teammates will be lifelong friends because you go through the long days, you go through the early mornings, late nights with them. Um, so if you just can lean on them and develop those relationships, you'll have those people friends for life. So like I know the people I met at Ohio State, are, my teammates are people I'll be with forever. Can I ask you about like, coaching like what what's for you and based on you know like your personality what is the best coach for you like what are the characteristics that would bring the most out of you I would say I like being pushed um so I like being told like you can do even better but I also like the coach that's going to give me confidence and say we believe in you um do what you do da 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 and give you a pat on the back and like go out there and do it but if I'm doing something that's not or he wants me to do better at, tell me. Um, you can even be stern at me. That's all right. Um, not a bit, I don't really, it doesn't bother me too much because I know it's all in the heat of the moment and just what comes with it. Mm -hmm. um, I would say those are like the biggest things for me in, in how I in needing my coaching. But the biggest thing is just being so, having a coach that's going to believe in you. That's the biggest thing for me. That's good advice as well. So you're an athlete, like you join the, I mean, you're an athlete and now you're an author. You join the ranks of people like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Chris Paul, and Kobe Bryant, who are also athletes as well as authors. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, how did you, how did you feel about writing growing up? I always enjoyed writing growing up. Maybe not stories, but I enjoyed writing, um, especially like I just enjoyed like seeing what my handwriting looked like. Um, Cause my mom always, she, she said, you better have good handwriting. She, she instilled that in me and my sister having good handwriting. So that's something I've always enjoyed growing up was writing. Uh, and then from a young age, it just kept going and going, but I would have never have told you from a young age that I was going to write a book, a book. That's for sure. So how did this come about? Like, can you tell me, like, tell me the title of your book? And what it's about and the like what you went through making this real so the title of the book is called the one percent kid and the basis of the book is it talks about a kid that has a dream to play his dream university which is the ohio state university <laughs> and then it talks about the mindset needed to get there and it talks about the one percent better everyday mindset and practice perseverance and patience are needed in order to reach your dream and it just shows the kid going through his journey that it wasn't always easy. I feel like some books show that it's always an easy linear path, but no, this book shows that there's ups and downs throughout the way, but with the right mindset and mindsets, you can achieve whatever it is you want to achieve and, and ultimately reach that goal. And for it coming about, it was actually my mom's idea. She, she not to read, write the book, but she was like, you should write a book. And I was like, I don't know. I don't really see myself writing a book. Like that's not really me. But she was like, you've had a crazy soccer story. Like you, you should share it. And there came a point in time where I was like, you know what? Let me let me try. I had some free time on my hands, and I wrote it more of like a biography, autobiography. So it wasn't really appealing to like a kid. And then I started to 
do some different things and wording and change it into a way that a kid can enjoy. I had my little cousins read it to see what they thought. And then from there, it just took off and yeah. So um, is this something that you want to continue to do? Do you think there'll be another book after another kid's book after this? There will be, uh, I'll be doing a series. This will be a three part series. So I'm going to do the 1% kid and then I'm going to figure out another name for the next book, but it's going to be me going through college. And then the next book will be me um, as a pro. So the next one, I'll probably work, start working on the next one, me going through college and, and probably pretty soon. But the book about me going through it as a pro, that will probably be in few way, way future, future. Yeah. So what is it like being a professional athlete? Because it's one thing, okay, you go to, you know, the Ohio State University, <laughs> play soccer, and then it's like, it's only, you want to talk about 1%. Like, this is like, you know, one of those things where it's like very few people. So like, tell me about that process a little bit. Like what? It was, it was insane to be able to um, make my dream a reality of playing professional soccer. When I had the chance to play pro after my junior year, my junior season, it was a very tough decision to pass up. And I was able to sign with a team in Arizona, which was just a coincidence that they wanted me because that's where I've lived half my life is Arizona as well. Um, so that was a blessing. And then to have the opportunity and be and represent the city that I grew up in half my life was, was pretty amazing. And the way the fans brought me in was amazing as well, too. They were so accepting and were such great supporters to me and the team as well. I would say the biggest thing about being pro is it, the game is so much different and faster and the pro from college, there's it's really a big step up. Um, but I had great teammates that were able to push me along and guide me through what it was like to truly be a pro. Um, but you realize everything's for your job now. So it's not just nilly willy having fun. It's for a job and you're getting paid for this. I know that you're competing against other people that are 10, 15 years older, you know? So it's, it's a big difference, big change. Were you scared? At first, a little bit, but it really didn't hit me that I was a pro and that I was where I was until maybe three months into the season. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, yeah. You're just like, you're, did you just one day like, oh my gosh, like I'm here. Like this is like, when did it hit you? Like, this is the real deal. Yeah. Like even when I had my debut, so it was the first game of the season and I played my first game of the season. But I came in like the last, I think, 10 minutes, eight minutes of the game. Even when I came on the field, like I still wasn't like, I still was just like in shock. Like I still didn't think. So I think it took me like having a fir like first couple like road trips and I wasn't the, on the team. And I was like, wow, I'm actually, I'm actually on the team. I'm actually getting paid to do this. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So you, you, you wrote this book and inevitably it's, it's to motivate kids. Why did you feel like this is something that you wanted to do? Um, something from I wanted to do from a young age is always give back and always inspire kids to reach their dream because I know for me growing up I never really saw someone that looked like me being a position that I'm in today or being a position that I aspire to be in. So that's why I decided to write this book is to be someone that kids can look up to and like and that kids can have an example to look at and realize that it, he did it. It's possible. And also see that what the steps I took and what the mindset I, I had in mean, going about it. So can you talk about some of your motivational and nonprofit work that you do? Yeah, so motivational motivational things that I do is I have a YouTube channel on uh, where I started a word of the week series where I talk about a word of the week and I implement it into the upcoming week and we talk about how can we improve 1% better every day using that word. Uh, mentally, spiritually, physically, in whatever way you want to improve. Um, so for instance, one of the words of the week was focus. So how can we focus more? How can we improve? What does it truly mean to focus? How do you use what makes it difficult to focus, right? Uh, and certain aspects and things. So that's something that I do. And then I also do other YouTube videos where I just have motivational quotes 
to different videos of me playing soccer. Um, and I post those as well. Um, and I feel like those have been very helpful and fulfilling to see how people can be like, wow, this really helped me. I needed this. That's, that's, that's truly a great feeling. And as to giving other work I've been trying to do is so my, I'm trying to start a foundation that will allow kids to have kids that don't have the ability to pay for a club and organize soccer to give them the ability to play organized club soccer. Um, all expenses paid. So my goal is to start that up pretty soon within the next two years and have the ability to have kids, people donate or however that goes about and get our money so that we can have a certain number of kids that are able to get sponsored by the foundation and be able to play uh, organized club sports, soccer. Um, it's all expenses paid. That's awesome. Have you met the kid yet that you influenced? The kid that I influenced. Have you met a kid yet that you didn't, you know, and they were, you know, that you've influenced, and and what it, what was that like? Can you share that experience? I have. I had two kids, uh, Sammy and Adam Peters. They're actually from Ohio. They were huge Ohio State fans, and they loved me at Ohio State. They said I was their favorite player, and when I left, they still kept in contact with me. They still to this day they keep in contact with me. Um, say they love me and all this. So it's pretty crazy. They've been huge supporters. And something I want to do in the future is I'm not sure where I want to be at yet. My dream is to be playing soccer overseas. So my dream is to one day take them to a game overseas and stuff like that. So yeah, them. And then I also have a kid out here from Arizona named Gabe. He went to the same high school as me for a couple of years, but he was a lot younger than me. But um, one training session I came to when I was in college, I came back to train with the, my old high school team and he was out there. And ever since then, he's just been a, He's been like, you inspire me, man. Like, I love your mindset. Uh, uh, so, and I actually just talked to him the other day. So, yeah. Cool. I was going to ask if you wanted to play overseas, who would be your I, your dream team if you were to play overseas? Dream team would either be PSG or Real Madrid. Okay. Yeah. Those are my dream teams. I'm a weird underdog Crystal Palace. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's my Premier League team. Yes, <laughs> that's for some reason they're like for some reason I attach to them. I can't explain why, but that's <laughs> that's awesome. So um, you so you wrote this book, and um, one of the things in teaching that we we teach is that books can be mirrors and windows, so they can be a reflection of yourself, or they can help someone see like your story. Um, what do you hope that someone sees when they look at you as a as a um, as a representation of, you know, like a black man, a grown black man out here? Like, what are the things that you want to see that you're hoping to inspire? I would say I hope someone sees a driven, um, kind young man that aspires to give back. Um, but also isn't afraid of hard work. Someone that um, enjoys just putting a smile on other people's faces, always looks at the positive side, the bright side, knowing that uh, he's just blessed to be in the position he is today and he cherishes every moment as uh, I think everyone should. So I would like to just be known as that person that was always had a smile on their face, had a positive outlook on life and just wanted to make a difference. And if for young black males that are, that will watch this, what advice do you give them about school and life in general? Anything that you want to share? Yeah, my advice would be to just be yourself. This is a really cliche because I feel like everyone says that, but as I've gotten older, I really started to hone in on my own uniqueness and realize that it is really good to be unique. Um, I've really actually started to enjoy people that are different. And I don't know, I kind of, this is kind of weird, but I say like, I enjoy weird people. I don't like normal people. Um, I like people that I like to think outside the box, do things that are outside the box, because I feel that's more genuine and you're trying to, it's hard to be weird. It's hard to be different, especially nowadays in today's society. Everyone's so caught up in wanting to do the same thing as everyone else. 
But if you can be that person that's going to break away from the status quo, um, that takes a lot of work and a lot of hard work and courage. So I would say my advice is just to be your unique self, cherish it, and find things that you truly enjoy, but that you enjoy, not what the other world is, not what the world enjoys or what your other friends enjoy, what you truly enjoy and, and chase those things and see where they can lead. Because I guarantee if you like chase what you love, other things, other good things will come with it as well. So you just gotta keep chasing your purpose. So if people wanted to find you, where would they go to find in your motivational information or the information about your book? I have a couple of Instagram pages. I have an Instagram page, my personal account, which is just Channing Chaston. And then I have a, another Instagram account under my business where I also put different the motivational videos, which is re at Real Life and Juice LLC. And then I also have... Uh, TikTok, I'm on at Chain Chasten, and then also Real Dot Life of Juice LLC, and then YouTube. My channel is Real Life of Juice. Thank you. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today about your book and about your life and and, and about reading and things like that. And I wish you the best of luck with your new team, and we hope to see you back again with your new book. Thank you very much, Tiffany. I truly enjoyed this, and I appreciate you. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much. Thank you.